Hello, we are Team 21025, and thank you for watching our Design Day video presentation. My name is Emily Bowers, and I'm a senior in mechanical engineering. My name is Eric Knowles, and I'm also a senior in mechanical engineering. My name is Jacob Murky, and I'm a senior in electrical and computer engineering. My name is Alexander Moore, and I'm a senior in electrical and computer engineering. I'm James Wing, and I'm a senior in electrical and computer engineering. My name is Akshat Srivastava, and I'm a senior in systems engineering. Here's our design day poster. We're first going to start with background into whom the project is for and what the project is focused on. The project is for the university's Baja race team, of which four of us are current members. Baja is a university team that designs, builds, and competes in a one-person off-road buggy each year. The system at the center of this project is the CARS Mechanical CVT. CVT stands for Continuously Variable Transmission, and it allows the car's gear ratio to change based on driving conditions and engine output. Currently, the CVT is made up of two mechanically driven pulleys known as the primary and secondary. The operation of the primary depends upon its collection of weights and ramps. As the primary rotates, centrifugal forces pushes the weights up their corresponding ramps, which causes the plates to close, and thus causing the gear ratio to change. Since the car's current CVT is mechanically driven, the focus of the senior design project is to redesign the CVT so that it can be electronically driven. With the CVT being electronically controlled, it would allow tuning to take place via a software update and the CVT components would have increased protections. And now to Eric and Jacob for the designs. One of the goals was to utilize components from the validated mechanical CVT and then incorporate the electrical components designed by the team into the interface. Many design ideas were considered, but in the end, a concentric safe cylinder powered by a linear actuator was used to move the pulleys. Due to the harsh conditions that the Baja car operates in, keeping simplicity and reliability in mind was important. And now Jacob will talk about the electric method. So in terms of our electrical system, we have a controls and data acquisition subsystems. For our controls, an inductive current sensor is used to monitor the spark plugs of our engine. And by measuring the time in between spark plug fires, we can determine the engine RPM and use that RPM to move the ECVT pulleys while maintaining a line pressure on the driving pulley to avoid belt slippage. For our data acquisition subsystem, the engine RPM and temperature of the box will be monitored by the main microcontroller and sent via I2C to a secondary microcontroller to be logged for later analysis. And now Eric will talk about the results of our completed mechanical system. Linear actuators are the heart of how the pulleys are moved. They create hydraulic pressure via a master cylinder to move the pulley plates and change the gear ratio between the engine and gearbox. The image on the right shows the general construction of the primary and secondary ECVT. In the video shown here, you can see the primary and secondary pulleys moving via hydraulic lines. The engine initially starts to idle where the pulley position does not move. The engine RPM then begins to increase. The primary pulley only partially closes before it reaches the shift point where the engine is making the most amount of power when the rate of the pulley is then moves based on the engine RPM. These goals were met during testing in the video shown. Jacob will now talk about the linear actuators which provide the hydraulic force to close the pulleys. In this portion of the video, you'll see our linear actuators moving back and forth as the engine RPM changes during testing. At this point, you'll see our primary actuator for our primary pulley is fully extended and its motion is halted by the limit switch to the far right of the motor. And then as the engine RPM changes based on different levels of throttle, you'll see that the pulleys may oscillate a little bit and then return back to an initial state as the engine returns to idle. Following up with that video and the results of our completed electrical system, we know that the microcontroller successfully reads engine RPM while monitoring and discarding any error measurements that could be caused by missing a spark plug fire or environmental RF noise causing inaccurate readings. The pulleys are moved in the appropriate directions based on successful measurement of the RPM to determine the current ECVT state. And for our data acquisition subsystem, temperature of the box and RPM data are successfully transmitted via I2C to the secondary microcontroller. And in the future, it would be ideal that this data is wirelessly transmitted so that the car status can be monitored real time in the pit. And now I'll hand it off to Alex to talk about the conclusion of our design. Thank you, Jacob. 
In our testing, we found that the eCVT behaves as we expected. A few of the system's requirements that it passes include that the current sense mounted on the spark plug is configured to effectively detect the engine RPM and pass this information to the main microcontroller. Another system requirement is that the microcontroller sends signals to the motor driver board, which moves the linear actuators as dictated by the algorithm uploaded to the microcontroller. A third system requirement is that the concentric slave cylinders are mounted to the pulleys and move them effectively in and out when hydraulic pressure is applied by the linear actuators. The movement of the actuators therefore determines the ratio of this ECBT, and this successful first prototype proves the viability of adjusting software parameters to affect CVT driving characteristics. For future implementation, we need to determine appropriate battery capacity for a full Baja endurance race, packaging for the ECVT to be implemented on a Baja race vehicle, and additional telemetry information that we might want to gather using additional uh, microcontrollers later on. I will now pass it to Aksha, who will talk us through the surprises and lessons learned. One surprise we came across was the dimensions of certain ordered parts not matching the dimensions of corresponding parts in the SOLIDWORKS model. And to resolve that issue, most of the parts were resized through machining. And for a few parts with smaller dimensions than required uh, would have had to be reordered with dimensions that more closely matched uh, the parts sizes in the model. And looking back at this project, we think the most important lessons learned were to order parts earlier as well as additional parts for preventing shortage issues. And we learned to be clear with the part specifications by getting more detailed drawings of the mechanical components. And uh, the system had one I2C port per board. And since it had multiple channels to communicate with, uh, we see that we'll need more serial ports in the future to allow for that. And for filtering out uh, the, re the radio frequency noise caused by the ECVT's DC motors, uh, we'll need har uh, hardware filtering to filter the noise out. We acknowledge and thank our sponsors, Dr. Michael Marcelin and the U Arizona Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, as well as our mentor, Doug May, for their support for our project.